Is the thumb drive plugged in? Yeah, it's just someone's got the wrong view here. We all set, Josh. I'm working on. They've got the camera changed here, so I'm working to make sure we can see all of you on camera. Us. We don't want to see that. Don't want us. There we go. <laughs> okay. Today is Monday, October 17th, 8 a.m. Uh, Neighborhood Restoration and Beautification Commission. We'll start with roll call. Lucas Richardson. Here. Kelly Grevy. Here. Jermaine Sullivan. Here. Mary Kay Wilcoach. Here. Second item is the approval of the October 3rd meeting minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as is. I'll second. Okay, roll call. Lucas Richardson. Yes. Kelly Grevy. I wasn't here. Oh, so that's right. Okay. Uh, Jermaine Sullivan. Yes. Mary Kay Wilkosh. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is to discuss rescheduling the community service day that we canceled last week. Um, I don't know if the weather is very good this week, obviously. <laughs> um, I, was, I was hoping that we could reschedule it to this week, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I, think <laughs> I don't the know. The forecast is not good all week. Yeah. So. I think it'd be nice if we could do it before the fall, but if we have to wait till early spring, I think that's okay as well for the Quincy Street. Well, it does show cloudy on Thursday, half cloudy on Friday, but Friday I don't think is a good day. Anybody else's thoughts? Kelly? <laughs> Can I reschedule? Uh, well, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like we should at least try. Um, and then if it's got to get canceled again because of weather, then yeah. so be it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm in Muskegon Wednesday through Friday, and I have to check my calendar because I'm not quite sure. What's uh, what's ne next week look like, rather than trying to get a turnaround in one week for weather? Let's see. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rain. <laughs> sure is uh, becoming fall. Hmm. Every day. We have to play it by ear. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe, maybe we could just 
look on next week on Monday or something outside of the meeting, and then if we set something up, I'll, I'll just send an email around. Yeah. And then we'll put the social media post. Okay. Are you still looking for Quincy Street to be the project? Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Where are they with working on it? Not started. Oh, okay. Still working on the sewer okay. project. <laughs> So in our thought is not a Friday, not a Saturday, and not a Sunday, right? Monday through Thursday. Okay. All right, I will do that. Um, okay. Next item is uh, just if we had an update on any of the volunteers from the schools. I know we got some communication last week. Is there anything to talk about with that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, I have a contact for uh, Kasman and uh, MCC uh, if we need volunteers for, uh, for projects and uh, um, MHS just said if they if, if we needed um, volunteers to call back and talk to uh, um, well the National Honor Society they always need uh, hours for volunteering so we could use them just mm -hmm. let them know what the project is and if they need hours they'll they'll let us know. That's good. So I have contacts for all three of. So I think that's a, that's a good point to. You know, when we start talking about a big community service day sometime in the spring, you know, we'll get way out ahead of it, a few months, get planning, put it on all of the school's NHS schedules too, so that way we can get a bunch of people and do a lot of work. I think that'd be a really good, effective way to use all those students. Okay. Um, and then the next item was just an update on any funding sources for Blight. I know we talked, I think I'm supposed to reach out to Rose. I, right. Because, I haven't done that yet. Well, I spoke to Mary Trust from Five Cap, which is the director of the five counties. Okay. And Mary said there is no funding available right now, um, maybe next year or something, but as of now, nothing. And so they have is like their insulation program so if somebody needs insulation in their home um, you know and they're of a certain income bracket they will uh, you can contact them they can get on their list they'll go through their application process um, she told me to reach out to the state um, of rural development not the local government one and I've tried several numbers and I can't reach anyone so I'll keep keep trying um, but right now, it's just the uh, energy weather program that's that's available. Okay. Actually, she's looking for resources too. Um, one more resource that they do have, though, is um, if someone was almost in foreclosure, uh, they might be able to help and assist them with, you know, maybe stepping back out of the foreclosure process. So that's that's all she had to say for this. And I did talk to Corey Van Fleet. Um, and Corey said there are no funds either. There might be after the campaign for the United Way, um, but right now he said there really isn't anything. He said he can probably help us with some volunteers, but as far as um, anything else, they just don't have the funding. <laughs> I'm, so I'm not sure about Yeah, Rose. I don't know why she said that. Rose gets the funding from five caps. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Maybe she thought they had it and then they yeah. exhausted and now they year maybe okay yeah I'll reach out to her okay figure out what what she's talking about because maybe she mis misunderstood what I needed to um, the uh, just real quick in, in regards to funding the 
state of Michigan is, re is releasing, proposing some funds for blight, for blight removal. <clears throat> the city manager, myself, and Rachel Nelson from the County Land Bank will be meeting Thursday to discuss the city's path moving forward on taking advantage of some of those funds. I've compiled a list of all the houses that the police officers feel should be demolished. And we're looking to see what it would cost for safe built to go in and do assessments, a professional assessment on those, if those houses could be saved or demolished. So we're trying to compile a list and uh, figure out if we could take advantage of some of those funds for demolition. I will say that 90% of the homes that should be demolitioned or demolished are privately owned. But again, we're working together with the land bank and to figure out what the city's position is going to be moving forward to apply for or utilize those funds. So are those homes vacant or are some most, of most of them are? Vacant. Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, I think they, they all are. I believe they all are. Uh, and it's typically, I'm going to say generally speaking, uh, those homes are owned unoccupied owner doesn't live in town um so and, and the those, funds are just for demolition and like for, like removing it the, the funds that we're going to look at would be for demolition yeah not for i haven't read anything that talks about rehabilitation um so i'll keep this group uh informed as to how those meetings are going and what direction the city's going to take so our city manager is pretty aggressive in that regards to blight and utilizing resources towards blight. So I'll let you know. There were monies available for rural development. You talked about uh, for demolition. We applied right before COVID and they stopped having those funds. Mm -hmm. We'll see how this shakes out with the state grant and to see if there's monies available. But again, those are for demolitions. And I think we're talking about financial assistance uh, for rehabilitation repair so like it's all piece of the same puzzle so that's the update on that is there a way that i could be a part of that meeting with uh, rachel sure yeah. i'll uh i'll ask the city manager okay um i didn't put this on the agenda but i think it might be a good idea to maybe draft up a letter to send to the two owners that we gave the rural development applications to. Because mm -hmm. if they haven't reached out yet, yes. then probably they yeah. weren't planning it. Yeah. Right. Um, the officers were able to speak to one of them and just kind of just pushing them along. And if you need help, reach out to this group. And so I think a letter probably would go a long way just to maintain contact. Um, maybe put some contact info for someone here who wants to be a point of contact to help them fill things out, so. I want to volunteer to write the letter. I can put it online. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I can, if you get a draft, I can, I can look at it and then I can get, get it coordinated to mail it out on the city letterhead and, okay. um, from Kaylee. Okay. Um, now I have future community service projects on the agenda here. If we want to start talking about maybe a, a big day in the spring. I think we should um, actually make ourselves some goals. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do and plan them and then really strategically work that so we can get it accomplished. to coordinate and get some more resources out there there's got to be some other groups we can reach out to that we haven't thought about and you know put together some kind of action plan for spring so that when spring comes we're ready to go and we don't mm -hmm. have to what we want to do yeah you know mm -hmm. do. i think that's a great idea and i think i think actually now um, as long as the people who contacted mary and myself are, are going to show up it, it's a lot better than what it was the yeah. first day we had i think 12 people mm -hmm on the docket for last week, but they canceled, so we would have had a pretty good showing, I think. Um, and then now that we have multiple contacts for all the schools in town, if we organize a, a big 
day, months in advance, I think we'd be successful. So, so too. And dumpsters. Yeah, and, and the dumpsters. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty big deal to be able to have that type of donation or whatever you want to call it. But And really, the spring is opportunistic for beautification. This this group is committed towards beautification as well. And uh, I think the sky is the limit as far as how many volunteers we can get and what we're doing. So You can even think about where we could plant some flowers. I'm just something mm -hmm. simple like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Anything anything that we could come up with that would beautify it, be easy, be simple, and... Well, what if we separate it into two, like if we do a, like a two week thing where we do one week is the, like a beautification and then the next week is we tackle our worst blighted. Sure. I think that sounds great. And figure out which ones are the worst ones and then we can work through the winter with those people and see if, you know. So maybe a cleanup day with the dumpsters, yeah. and that's like a blight removal or junk removal day. Yeah. And then, uh, okay. does anybody have any thoughts on uh, like where, like what kind of size of project? Are we thinking just like one day each, like a really like a full day, or? Well, I, it's all gonna come on what? On what? Well, <coughs> I think. <coughs> Have. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what we found, <clears throat> if we're going to have projects, if you if you work your volunteers eight hours a day, they're probably not going to come back. I think if you have blocks, you're probably more successful that way. Or in the past, um, I'm not sure what group it is, but if we have, let's just say, best case scenario, we have 30 volunteers, right, and we have six project sites, at least we can coordinate it so that if your project is done, you are done. Uh, the National, the Manistee County Day of Cleaning I volunteered for years ago, this was our project, and our project was uh, the Riverwalk, the Northside Riverwalk, so it was quite a long time ago. But once that project was done, that group was done. So you don't have to worry about constantly, and I think it helps keep organized in our minds. The only setback is, is that you start, you know, resources as far as tools, you start getting pretty skinny on, but... Um, you know, we had seven volunteers the last project. We had an abundance of tools, I felt. Yeah, okay. So maybe this group might think about doing that way more, where this group has this project. When that project is done, they can leave. I mean, they can check in with a different group, but just my recommendation. I think if you, if you have a full day, when you invite them back, they're going to assume it's going to be another full day, and I think we need to make these commitments so people can pop in, work well to serve, and then pop out. Yeah. That's my uh, opinion. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to figure out what projects we have first. Yeah, and then right. We can... I like the I like the goals idea. If, if we <coughs> come up with a few goals, of everybody bring it bring it to a meeting, and then um, kind of say, well, that might not be what we want to do, or yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That's on everybody's list. Um, because I think the projects, it, they're going to just fall into our hands when officers bring bring us, you know, <coughs> the junk removal cases or overgrown vegetation on the house, like those sorts of things. We're not going to be able to know that right now. Um, and if we could just plan for our goals, I think that's good. Yeah, yeah I, I think that you're going to find we'll have substantially more beautification projects and blight projects based on the criteria that this group has set. I mean, if you remember back to this project we did a few weeks ago or last month, uh, there, there weren't a lot that fit that criteria, and we I think we removed two as options for maybe safety reasons or otherwise, so I think we're going to find in the spring that it's going to be probably more beautification, beautification on yeah. public property than, than anything else. So... But we'll see. Well, I think uh, I think we should have a, a goal to to bring to the next meeting. Everybody to to have goals of what we want to accomplish in the, the next community service day. And I'll put that on the agenda.
All right. Um, if there's no more discussion on that, then the next item is just scheduling meetings uh, in January and beyond. Um, right now we have just one meeting for the next two months each month, one, one meeting a month. Do we want to stay on one meeting a month schedule in the winter time or meet twice a month? I think next, next meeting we're going to have a new uh, member on the committee. The council's voting on that tomorrow. Um, were we going to move these meetings to 9 instead of 8, though? We talked about that. Yeah, I, I didn't know if we could reschedule the ones that were already scheduled for a different time. I guess we just have to make sure that nobody else has this room reserved for okay. 9 o'clock. Yeah. It's, a, it's, just a re it's just a facilities issue. As long as you post them publicly, you're fine. Uh, Mondays at 8 o'clock are very difficult for myself to make. Usually after 9 is better on Mondays. So, uh, yeah, Monday's fine for me. It's just, yeah. Mary, is that uh, 9 or after 9? How does that work for you? It'll be fine. Well, yeah. Same for you? Okay. Okay. Sounds like <laughs> Just the late start school messes. So are we changing this? So, yeah, we have to vote on changing the November 7th and December 5th meeting to 9 o'clock, and then um, we need to confirm that that's um, this room is open, so. Will you send an email just to confirm yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I will make a motion to do that. I'll second. Okay. Roll call. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lucas Richardson. Yes. Kelly Grevy. Yes. Jermaine Sullivan. Yes. Mary Kay Wilkos. Yes. Okay, um, and then do we want to try to shoot for like the first or second Mondays of the month for 2023? And then we can be flexible. If something doesn't work, then we'll just bring it up and we can reschedule. Okay. Should we wait till the new person comes? Yeah. Because maybe that will have worked on. That's a good idea. We do have still two meetings. Does there, did Kelly have a deadline for when we needed to get that stuff scheduled? I don't think she gave me a deadline. She said they just want to know as soon as we can okay. because they like to post all of the commission schedules for the year, okay. coming year. So we can, we'll revisit in the next meeting then. Okay. Anything for the good of the order? I just uh, wanted to say that one of um, the blighted houses in our neighborhood was purchased and it will be torn down soon within the next couple weeks. Good. Nice. Jermaine was the realtor. <laughs> I just have a couple things just to remind this group of their annual presentation to city council. I don't know when that is, but um, they, they stagger them. So just to keep that in the back of your mind. And then um, I would recommend when we get a new member, and anytime we get a new member, we go back over the bylaws. Um, it only takes 10 minutes just so that we're all clear on what the mission and focus of the group is. I think it's time well spent. Okay. That's it. Should I reach out to uh, city manager to see when our annual presentation is? Or you can. I don't know that they have those set. I, for example, the police departments is in March, so I mean I think they're all throughout the year. Yeah. And the city manager usually gives plenty of notice. I, mean, I think we get three months notice, although we already have ours kind of. So just make sure it's in the back of our mind. We talk about all the wonderful things that's happening here, the, the things we've done, the things we're doing, photographs, things like that. So. All right. Anything else? Anybody? Nothing. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. 
Morning.